So I've got two cars uh, at the moment. I've got this car, Azure 306 convertible, 16 valve, 2 litre, uh, and you'll have seen uh, in this video uh, some of its performance times, which I was trying to put the record straight for this little car. Um, and the other one is the BMW 330i G20, which again, if you look up here, uh, there's a whole playlist of stuff about that car. But anyway, that's not what this is about. But what I was interested to see how cars really had changed uh, over that period, over that 20 year period. Um, and if you think back to 1999, those of you who are alive, uh, apart from the fact I got married that year in December of 1999, um, so that was an auspicious day uh, for me, so still very much happily married. Um, I have to say that in case my wife's watching. Um, it seems unlikely though. Uh, no, but really, uh, that was a, a, a great day. Um, obviously the other thing at the time, we were awaiting the big uh, fallout and the massive supposed problems we were going to have with the Millennium Bug in the year 2000 when all the computers allegedly were going to stop working, which um, clearly they, they didn't. So that was a load of hoo over, over pretty much nothing. Um, and 1999, hard to believe, five years before Facebook, so no Facebook, six years before uh, YouTube, which is obviously the lovely medium by which I bring you this nonsense. So a whole six years would elapse before YouTube. Mobile phones uh, look like this. And uh, well, I have a easy job on your foot, that was an a and &E job. Um, computers look like this. Britney Spears look like this. So, you know, quite a lot has changed really, I would say, in that, uh, in that time. Um, I suppose what I'm getting around to is what's changed in the world of cars. Well, for me at least, I'm surprised at how little has changed. So, I put a thing on my blog a while ago about how come a hundred years down the track we're essentially still using a steering wheel, pedals, gear lever to control our vehicle. I mean, that's not come on at all really, has it? I mean, that's in a hundred year period, pretty much. Um, so that's an odd one. I mean, I like it, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I, I wouldn't particularly change it, but it seems odd that we haven't um, evolved really in, in that respect. The other things that are different that I clearly notice very um, readily between the two cars is this 1999 car, I think in its day, wouldn't have been particularly a small car. However, it is a little minnow now. When you see it parked amongst cars of today, the small cars of today, it's very low, it's very narrow. It's just a tiddler of a car. Although inside, I'd say it's not bad. You know, I've had my big, massive six foot three son in here today. He even sat in the back and took some video for me. No particular problem, so I wouldn't say it's a small car inside, so it's well packaged. I don't have an issue with that at all. Um, the other thing I'd say is that the again, it could be that this is a 21 year old car, but I suspect not. The power steering is a lot, lot heavier in here than in the BMW. So when I get into the BMW from this car, it's like it's like that beer thing that you have that city button. Um, you know, it really is very, very light and uh, over assisted, I'd say, compared to this. Um, I prefer this, I prefer a bit more meat in the steering, to be honest. I think the car feels a lot more direct for it. So I don't think that that's an improvement, particularly the over assisted nature of the car today. Um, the other thing, obviously, got no infotainment in here. Got an old Clarion um, CD player, you know, you know, that would have been all, all the rage um, in 1999. You'd have been, um, you know, respected for having a CD player, I suspect, an electric aerial. Um, but do I miss that? No, I don't even put it on in here. I just like to listen to the car not um, run very well as it's not doing at the moment. I like to hear it, one of the cylinders um, dropping away. Um, so I don't miss that. Uh, clearly most cars have sat nav now, and my cars, are, I guess, for a number of years have had um, factory fit sat nav. Um, and actually, for the first time the other day, I used Google Maps. Uh, I had to go to Gloucester, 
drove to Gloucester because I knew roughly where it was and stuff. And I only put Google Maps on when I needed to find a little road that I was heading to. So I don't know what was so. Speed camera warnings took me directly to the place, told me which side of the road it was with accuracy, uh, just a good experience. So I don't, you know, I wouldn't worry about personally about not having sat now driver aids, which I'm not a fan of. This has got ABS, which I would say is one that clearly is beneficial to have. It's got no traction control. Clearly it's got no lane departure nonsense. Um, it's got all uh, that other stuff. Um, but it has got a very persistent misfire at the moment, which is annoying. Again, do I miss that? Well, not in this car. I don't think you need traction control particularly. You know, it's not a massively powerful car. Um, I probably need that a bit more in my uh, BMW, in my 330i, because that's rear wheel drive, and that can be a bit of a handful in the wet, um, you know, if, you, if you're not the uh, traction controller. So clearly that needs it. But autonomy, I mean, don't get me started on those driving aids and autonomy, because if you want the car to drive you somewhere, well, just get a taxi or go in the go on the bus or get a train you know driving a car is about driving a car isn't it not letting it do it for you and I still think we're best equipped top of the food chain and all that to um, make the right decisions whereas a I'm not sure a machine is um, controversial view um, there'll be letters or emails or something um, I'm gonna open this window because it is about 90 degrees in here so forgive me um, so yeah, I don't really miss any of that stuff. I really don't miss the nannying alarms that go off to tell you, oh, you haven't done this, or you have done this, or you shouldn't have done this, but you have done it. Oh, yeah, don't do that, don't forget this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I could really do without all that. So this car just lets you get on with it. These older cars, you know, make your own mistakes. Um, do things you probably shouldn't, and you know, you're a grown up, so um get on with it so i wouldn't say cars have come on really at all i would say reliability well i don't think new cars are that reliable um you know i think pretty much most of the new cars i've had have had some sort of problem these cars only seem less reliable now because they're 20 years old versus a brand new car i suspect when these cars are new they were as reliable as new cars today i don't think we've made any progress there you could cite economy well I don't know. I mean, this isn't a very economical car. I just get through um, fuel for sure. Uh, but none of the cars that you drive today can you ever reach the sort of figures that um, the manufacturers claim for them. So um, I think you're living in a, a false reality if you think you're going to get um, 70 miles to the gallon out of anything nowadays. Uh, the BMW that I um, drive when I was um, running it the other day was doing some filming so I was doing stopping and starting I got 23 miles to the gallon over a run I mean this car is definitely more economical than that that's for sure uh, so keep your economy clearly they're safer if you're going to have a massive sausage and mash then you want to be in a more modern car I suppose my view is would be the best uh, thing so I suppose I don't spend an awful lot of time thinking about that but again if I've got my kids who are young still little babies then I suppose I'd probably be more worried about that I think the the couple of things from the Beamer that nowadays is essential particularly on a day like today is air conditioning um you know every car I mean most cars I think have, have it now but essential I'd say that's some global warming for you when I was a kid you know it was a luxury thing to have air conditioning but now i would say absolutely essential this car hasn't got it i understand on a on a um soft top why you wouldn't necessarily all i would say is you do get days that are hot and rainy so just saying or put the roof down if you're a bit hot doesn't always work so air conditioning's one what else is there that i must have in the new cars that i don't get in a car like this so yeah other than that can I you know how have we come on so safety yes um, manufacturing techniques yes but all cars are bigger so although you know they might be constructed um, more frugally and be lighter um, they're bigger anyway so actually they're heavier you know that BMW is one of the lightest in its class I think it's 1500 kilos 1600 kilos so it's it's a um, 
it's a car full of adults heavier than this car and I know they're not the, the same type of car but even so this was probably a heavy car on its day because of the um, reinforcement for the convertible uh, so no I don't miss anything I don't think we've progressed that much in 20 years um, I find it no hardship driving this car I'd obviously would do probably if it was raining a lot because I don't think it's raining out very well um, but in the times that I've had this it's been sunny and I don't feel hard done by in fact I like it yeah I mean this is 700 quid uh, and the BMW was you know luckily I didn't pay for it but it's 40,000 quid as well you can see which is the one that I bought with my own money. Um, but yeah, you know, why not? Uh, There's a lot to be said for these cars, so that's it really. I just thought I'd give them my thoughts. So thanks for letting me uh, bend your ear for a bit and uh, take care and I'll see you soon.